I'm Karen. I'm going to talk to you about the fourth and final part of my series on volume photography. And this is going to go over all the post-production work and how to get everything completed and wrapped up. Um, the main thing that we need to think about, first of all, is editing all the photos that we've taken on our volume shoot day. When you get home, make sure you upload your camera cards to your computer. I like to have a backup of all my files. Don't ever delete any files before everything is completed. I never delete files anyways. I always have everything, every shot I've ever taken, I keep it on my hard drive. So it's always a good way to make sure nothing gets lost or accidentally uh, removed. So put all your stuff into folders. I have a very organized system on my computer as far as how I store all of those folders and pictures. Um, I make sure that I have a folder with that specific job. Inside that job, I have all kinds of different, or inside that folder, I have all kinds of subfolders. Um, I have a folder for all of my raw files. I have a folder for all of my edited files. Um, I have different folders for if I'm doing green screen and different stages of the process when I'm um, getting those cleaned up and put into templates. Um, I have all the rosters from um, initially from the team uh, members and the, the coaches that gave them to me. I have all of the barcodes from my shoot. I have everything. I've got order forms. I've got all these different folders with, inside this one job to keep it all organized. That's really going to save you later and it's going to help you analyze all of your data. So um, anyhow, so you get all your files put in, all your raw files put in your computer, then you need to get them batch edited. I like to go through Lightroom and I pick out maybe a couple um, presets that I'm going to put onto my images. I apply my presets and I get them all edited to where they look pretty much all the same from that same shoot. Um, of course, if you have any lighting changes throughout the day, maybe you're shooting outdoors, whether it's um, partially covered or completely out in the open, you're going to have to just adjust the settings, um, your color correction and your exposure from the different points in the day where your image exposure and coloring changed. Um, once you get all of your preliminary edits done, um, I take everything out of Lightroom and I put them into a folder where they're edited or some way to mark your folder um, that you've completed that part of your, your process. Um, if you are doing green screen, you want to make sure that you have a good workflow for your extractions and if you have a template that you're putting your, um, your knockouts into, you want to have all of that in a good system. Um, I struggled with this for a long time because I started doing green screen several years back and it became a really tedious process. I would have my template, there would be different layers in Photoshop to these templates and I'd have to manually enter in the kid's name and their jersey number or whatever you know the information was that was going to change from person to person. And I stumbled upon finally um, a system and it's by PixNub. They're not paying me to talk about it, but they were a total lifesaver and I was able to go in. I think their program is easy green screen and there's a way for it to automate all of your photos and it basically takes all your, your camera, or, sorry, all of your raw files if you want to use your raw files or you can use JPEGs and takes your green screen photos and does the knockout and then puts them right into the template and it changes the information. You upload like a CSV file and it changes the information. So it enters every person's name and their jersey number or whatever fields you want changed per person or in each picture. And it was a huge time saver for me. It took a little bit of time to figure that out and go through all kinds of practice runs to get familiar with the software. But once I did, it was a game changer for me. I was able to turn around my projects a lot quicker, get them done in like a week versus two or three weeks sometimes, and it, it saved everything. So I'm glad that stuff exists. Um, you can certainly check it out and see if it works for you. And it was reasonably priced. It wasn't something that was breaking the bank, and it certainly um, paid for itself. Um, the other thing that I do in my workflow is because I'm using the barcode system and I mentioned before using the program Photo Velocity, which is no longer on the market, but I have to send all my final images back through there to create a sorting system where it basically sorts out each person into their own file with their specific images because that information is going to then go into the ordering software, wherever your uh, print lab is. Um, for me, I use Miller's lab. There's lots of other stuff out there. There's Bay Photo and I don't know, there's a host of them. So you'll have to just research um, which print lab you want to use. But um, I've been using Miller's and MPix for many years, actually the whole time, and I've not had any issues with them. They've been really great. So um, their software works with my photo velocity software, my barcode system, 
and it all just kind of works together. So you've got to find your workflow, what you have to do, how to go from A to Z in your workflow. Um, all those different programs you'll have to learn independently and don't do it after the shoot. Um, you'll want to give yourself several um, days to figure that stuff out and ample time to um, to work through any problems you might have to be able to contact any of the companies that you may have specific questions of where you can't find answers. Um, all of that stuff can be worked out beforehand and that's going to make your workflow a lot better after the fact. Okay, also think about do you want to post any of these pictures online, maybe on your social media page or on your website. Um, I've found in my experience with like independent shoots, personal shoots, um, you know, you put pictures on online and advertise your stuff and, and people show their friends and they tag and all this stuff and all that's great. But when it comes to sports and group pictures like this, volume jobs, it kind of just opens a can of worms. If you post one, you got to post all of them and they didn't pay for a digital picture anyways. And then they're kind of getting a free digital picture and it just turns into a big old mess. So I've stopped posting samples of these kids from the shoot on my social media pages and on my website just for that fact. Um, you know, sometimes people will just ask for a favor and it just kind of gets out of hand. So for me, it works better not to. Um, if you want to offer digital pictures, that's totally fine. If that's something that you're offering in your packages, just make sure people are paying for that and paying for the print release so that you're getting money out of the deal either way, whether they order prints or order a digital file. Um, okay, when you have finished ordering, well, first, before I get to that part, when you're actually putting everything into your ordering software for the print lab, maybe Miller's or whatever, um, I always double check, make sure before I send the order off that I have included exactly what I need to have ordered. I double check everybody's order form to make sure that everything that I'm supposed to order does get ordered. Um, I've had it to where I've missed something or one time I accidentally ordered seven of somebody's package and I knew them and it was kind of funny, but I ended up paying for that cost just because um, I accidentally pressed seven instead of one for that one. So just double check, you know, errors happen and uh, make sure that you're not having to order one or two extra things after the fact. I know with Miller's and a lot of other companies, they have an order minimum. Maybe it's $15 or $20 or something. But if you only have like one or two pictures that you missed or that you need to order later on, that can really eat into your profits just because you're only having to pay for like a photo that costs you 50 cents or $1.50 for the actual one picture and then you're having to pay 15 or 20 dollars for it so just try to minimize those errors and save yourself a few dollars here and there if you can um, when i get everything back i double check all of my orders against what i've received i open up all the packages i don't open the individual packages but um, i just want to make sure that what i have there in my hand is what i sent off in my order to the lab um, that's another thing I wanted to mention was pre-pack or packaging individually everybody's orders. The reason I went with Miller's over some of the other um, photo labs that are out there is they will individually package all of the orders, all of the pictures. When I started doing this um, like four or five years ago, I didn't know about all of that. And so I was ordering my pictures and they would come all just scattered. And I had no way to know who is who, except for looking back at those pictures of the name slates we did where they just had their name and stuff and the kid held it up, you know, and comparing faces against what they held up in front of them as their name. And that just was a huge, ugly mess. And then I had the picture envelopes where I would stuff in exactly what they ordered. and. Oh my goodness, it was a nightmare. So I will never do that again, provided that I have the option to pay an extra little fee to have the print lab package them. It is worth every penny. And most of the time it's only like 10 or 15% that they will charge you to individually package orders. So well worth it. Um, when I get those back, you can usually choose to have them already sealed closed or leave them open. You may want to insert something. Maybe you have an offer that you want to put in there to all the people that you had at that shoot. Maybe you want to offer them a discount off of um, individual family photos or something like that. If that's the case, just have them leave the envelopes open. You can stuff stuff in there when you, you know, get them at home and then you can seal them up before you give them back. Um, so make sure you have everything before you give them out back to the team. Um, it's also important to um, organize everything. I don't like to give them back a box of just orders. Um, you know, all the pictures and the envelopes. I want to make sure that they're organized by team and that each coach is going to get their group 
separately. Um, usually I end up turning the box of pictures back into whoever I set the shoot up with. Maybe it's like the head coach or the person who's on the board that organized the photos with me or whatever. I will give it back to them and then I will have groups inside of that box of each team. So then they can just basically turn around and give that group to the coach and then they distributed their next practice or game or whatever. So it's saved everybody a lot of trouble instead of searching through the box and saying, oh, I need this photo or that photo, or we didn't get this one or we didn't get that one. And they will really appreciate the organization, the time that you took to you know, double check everything. So besides that, if you have any sort of commission that you're paying back to the team, just have that check ready and give it to the specific person. I would never leave a box of pictures or a commission check with just anybody. I want to make sure that that gets back into the right hands of the person that's supposed to receive it so that I can say I saw it being delivered. You know, there's never any question and it really minimizes any problems that could arise. Um, <clears throat> I've had a lot of situations too where people want to reorder pictures later. Maybe they didn't have money at the time to order the stuff or they really liked them and they wanted to order an extra package. So if you have people that want to order extra pictures after you've already gotten your group of photos back, I just try to get a feel for how many people are out there. I might wait a few days or a week and then place another group order. That way I'm not paying a minimum for every single package and it's not cutting into my profit so badly. Another thing you can do is you can have people order extra photos online. Maybe if you have a situation where you have something like Zenfolio or a gallery where they can log in and they can order their packages online, they may be paying extra costs like additional tax or shipping, but that's kind of the cost for ordering stuff late and missing out on the group order. We always kind of let people know up front that if you place your order that day, you're getting group discount, you're getting volume pricing um, because we're ordering as a group, we can save some of those extra costs and pass them down to other people. It's always a good idea to keep all of your orders um, that people have placed. I like to scan mine into the computer and keep them in the file with that specific job. If you get all of your picture packages back, you turn them into the coaches, they distribute them to all of the kids and the parents. You're going to have somebody come back and say, oh, well, I didn't order this or I ordered this and I didn't get it. That way you can go back and say, hey, I double and triple check. This is the order form that I have. Oftentimes I'll even send the parent a picture, maybe text them a picture of the order form. I've had it to where somebody actually misspelled their child's name on their order form and it was printed that way. And they said, my child's name is spelled wrong on my photo. Well, I looked back and I sent them a picture of it and come to find out they just, you know, made the mistake. So I worked something out where they wouldn't have to pay all, you know, over again to have that remade, but I was able to, you know, give them a discount at it um, because they did make that mistake. But anyways, my point is if you have those orders, you can just look and see, hey, was it their issue or mine? And how can I work this out with them? So you're going to get a lot of situations where you're going to have to you know, talk to parents afterwards about maybe small little issues or things that came up or, or whatever. So um, keeping detailed records is always a really great idea because it's going to help you so many times. It's a really good idea to keep detailed records of your participation. How many people were in the group? How many people ordered? How much did they spend on average per package? What packages were popular? What didn't work so well? What can you include next year or not include? All those things are great. You want to be able to compare your data from year to year and look at trends and see how it can help you change and make things better in the future. And then you can also look at, at it as experience for if you're going to shoot a different type of a group or team and all that data is very useful. So if you can set up some sort of spreadsheet or a system in place beforehand that you can work with, and it may change over time the way that you organize your information, but just recording anything is going to be better than not having that data to look back on in the future. So and this is pretty much everything I wanted to go over um, with this volume photography series. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or reach out and give me a message somehow. Um, I'd be happy to either do another video or answer you directly, but I appreciate you watching. And if you enjoy these, please subscribe and I will have more for you in the future. I'll see you then.